in terms of world peace, I want you to think about human history. I want you to go home and look at an atlas. I brought an atlas here at the Times of London's Brief History of the World. And when you look at where human civilization was 10,000 and 4,000 years ago, the country that we now call Iraq, the country where hundreds of thousands of people are dying each year, was the cradle of civilization. When you go and look on that map at the country of Iraq, there are the twin rivers, the Tigris and the Euphrates rivers, running through that country. And in that country, people started to learn to farm. And as a result of that farming, they started to build cities and specialise and specialise their labour. So that the civilization that we have now, where we have doctors and filmmakers and artists and so on, was born. And when that agriculture started, it wasn't terribly efficient. It was actually easier to go around and pick food off the land than it was to go engage in farming. But some people didn't want to farm and they made other people do that work. And so the beginning of agriculture, the beginning of civilization, the beginning of that specialization was directed by people who wanted other people to do the hard work. And those first towns of the Tigris and Euphrates came together and formed the first kingdom in the world because those cities could not survive without expanding, without growing, without bringing food from further away to feed their increasing populations, the increasing number of people who preferred to do art or sing songs or do other things. And so our whole civilization has been founded on growth. And it's been founded on growth for that 10,000 or that 4,000 years. And that growth has come at the expense of the neighbours. The armies have gone out and they've taken land away from people who are less well armed to feed the cities from which those armies came. And that has been the history of humanity. And now we stand at a federal election in a small country at the arse end of the world and a lot of people ask me, what difference can you, as a federal politician, make to this whole history of humanity? And I say to them, I say we have to make a difference because the world is now full. Unless we are going to live off algae from the oceans or unless we're going to go and start to take the resources out of space, we have to find a different way to live because we have no choice. And the Greens are the only party that have domestic and national policies that are not based on feeding the engine of infinite growth. Labour, when you look at history over that same period of time, history has been the constant devolution of power, the constant looking after more and more people as we go through the cyclic nature of the bully versus the little guy. And every time the little guys get organised, they look at they expand the rights of the people they're fighting for. And this time round, we've got to be fighting for the rights of the unborn, for the whole environment. Because if we don't, we're goners. Now in this federal seat of Richmond, there's a small chance that I can actually win this seat, but I can only win this seat if we get 8,000 people who've never voted Green before to vote Green for the first time. So I want all of you to help me get up to Tweed Heads and the Tweed Coast and convince those people who may not be your natural friends and allies to vote Green for the first time, because if we don't start somewhere, then we are all doomed. That's all I've got to say. I want to see world peace and I want it to start here in the Byron Shire.